G'day viewers. In this segment we're going to go into more detail about the application to network interface by going over the Socket API, the API which is used to write essentially all internet applications. Okay, so uh, the figure here is to provide you with a little bit of context and remind you where, of where we're at. We have hosts on the left and right side of the network. They're using the network. Applications run on these hosts. Now the applications want to talk to one another and they're going to send messages, that's this dotted path here between one another. But the way they do that is they get to talk to one another via their host, sending messages only locally. And to do that, they need to use the application to network interface. Before we can go into details of the application to network interface, we need a simple motivating example to consider. So we'll look at a client server application. In this figure, we can see that a, a client on the left side of the network, actually the client really means the client app, which is running on a host on the left-hand side of the network, sends a message, a request, to a server. Again, that's really a server app running on the server host on the other side of the network. The server then receives this request and responds with a reply. That's it. It's a fairly simple application. But even though it's a fairly simple application, it's very widely used and it's the basis of many different internet applications that you would use today. A file transfer, for instance, fits this paradigm. You can imagine the client sending the name of a file to a server and the server responds with the contents of the file. Web browsing fits this model too. In a web browser, your browser sends a request, which is the URL of the page it wants, to the web server and the web server then returns the page. Um, another simple application, test application, is Echo, in which a client sends a message to a server and the server responds by simply uh, echoing that message and providing it back. Okay, so that's our simple motivating application. Let's see how we would write that um, using an application network interface. Well, to do that, we need a concrete network to application interface to talk about. The interface that we're going to talk about is Sockets. The Socket API is widely used. It, it underlies essentially all applications which are on the internet today. Now, Sockets provide a, a simple interface to use the network called, surprisingly enough, a Socket. Um, the Socket API originated with uh, Berkeley Unix in the early 80s, but it's now part of all major operating systems and there's a socket library in essentially every programming language you would want to use which uses the network. Sockets provide two different kinds of network services that you can choose from. The first service is a stream, that is a, a byte stream, a stream of bytes between a client and a server where the stream of bytes is delivered reliably. That is the network service that we're going to look at to build our client server model. There is a second kind of network service, datagrams, in which um, applications can unreliably send individual messages between themselves. But you can ignore that for now, and we'll get back to it later in the course. A little more on the Socket API. This uh, figure describes how the Socket abstraction works. We have a host and two different applications. The um, network application API is that horizontal line again. And you can see that the applications are both talking across that API. Each application has its own, at least one, different socket structure. I'm just coloring them in here in blue. So these different applications have different sockets. Each socket also has a port number which serves as a local address. This is how we can multiplex many different applications onto a single host and receive messages and route them to the right application because all of these applications have a different port number which can be used to identify them. Well, this table tells us the, the, the full socket API. You can see that there are eight API calls, so it's, it's fairly simple. Um, nonetheless, it's proved very flexible in practice for writing a wide range of applications. Um, well, let's see what those calls would be. Now first, there is a, a primitive called socket, a socket API call. Well, that's what makes these socket structures that you can use. What other API calls do we need? 
you won't be surprised to learn that we need a send call if you want to be able to send information across the network from a client to a service A, and a receive call if you want to be able to get that information on the other side of the network, receive a message from the network. Those are the, the first calls that you might think of. What are all of the rest of the calls? The rest of the calls have to do with setting up and tearing down connections. With a uh, stream model of communication, it's much like a telephone call. A connection needs to be established first before you start speaking away and delivering all of that content to the other side. You need to make sure that someone is there to receive it. So to manage connections, we have a connect call, which is used from one side to initiate a connection to the other side. These other calls in the middle here, bind, listen and accept, have to do with preparing on the other side to receive incoming calls. And then finally, there's a close call, which is used to release connections when you're done so that you can clean up. Well, let's see how we would use sockets. I have a, a timeline figure here. The client is on the left-hand side, the server is on the right-hand side, time runs down this page. And what I'd like to do is just think about the different phases that um, our clients and servers need to go through to communicate. What do they need to do? Well, first, they need to connect with one another before we can do anything. Once they've connected, then the client will send to the server a request and the server will respond with a reply. And then after we're done with all of that, we will simply close the connection and we're essentially done with our simple application. So this is quite a simple model that we're trying to uh, th th that we're trying to write as an application. Let me just tidy that up a little bit. Here's the same diagram. I've drawn it again just a little more clearly and I've numbered the phases so you can see on the client side the first thing it needs to do is connect. Then it will send the request. The reply is going to come back and will disconnect. And similarly on the other side. Okay, well let's add a little bit more detail. This is what we want to happen across the network. What socket API calls are need to be made on the client and the server to cause this to happen? Let's try and work through it. On the client, well, actually in both cases, one of the first things you need to do is call a socket API call to make a socket so we have some way to access the network. Now the client is then essentially going to want to connect. That's great. To make all of this happen on the server side, though, we need to prepare a little bit. We need to go through the calls bind, listen, and accept in that order. And if you remember from the table, bind is uh, setting up a, a port number for a socket, so we have a specific address and port on the server to which the client can connect. Listen is preparing that socket to receive incoming connections, and accept is waiting to receive an incoming connection from the other side. The client's connect call will then be connected through the network and received by the accept call. The connect call from the client is going to need to specify what port to connect to on the server too, by the way. At any rate, once we've got connect and accept, after that, the client is going to send a request across to the server. The server better call receive if it would like to receive it from the network. Once it's got it, the server is going to send its reply. How it constructs the reply is really up to the server. It might read a file from disk, pull a web page, whatever it is. And on the other side, the client will receive the reply. And after that, for a simple exchange, we're done. Both sides will then call close. And our socket program is finished. I've tidied this up again. Here's the same diagram just with the text a little clearer. Now what I've done is I've numbered the, the calls as they would normally occur in, in the right order as we go through them. So the two socket calls would come first. Then ideally what we would like to happen is on the server you would call bind, listen and accept. And you would do that to prepare the server for incoming connections. So you do that before connect is called on the client. Actually, the, the server process will probably do this when it's started up, so it's ready and waiting until eventually a connection comes along. 
after connect, you would like the server to have called receive. So uh, once it's accepted a connection, it's then just waiting. Once it's picked up the phone, it's just waiting for the other end, the client, to say something and send a request. The client will then send the request, which will be received. The client will then call receives because it will be awaiting a reply after it's sent its request. It will just do nothing but wait to hear from the other side. On the server, once we've received the message and constructed a reply, you'll then call send to send it. And then sometime later, both sides close. I've also marked some of these calls with an asterisk. These calls are blocking calls. So for instance, uh, when you call accept on the server, at that stage the server is waiting for an incoming connection. The program will be blocked and it will resume when there is an incoming connection event from the network. So as far as the program is concerned, accept will just magically return a connection when one's available. Similarly, the connect call on the other side is a blocking call. The client calls it, and as soon as that call returns, there is a connection, but some amount of physical time may elapse while the connection is made in the background. You can see here also that receive is a blocking call. The server will call receive, and then it will just block and wait until the message is actually delivered by the client calling send, maybe sometime later. It might be a fraction of a second. It might be tens of seconds later. We can see also on the client calls receive, which is a blocking call, it will wait for the server to send a message back. Uh, that message might take a short amount of time to produce. And then we call close and we're done. Finally, all we've got that's left to do to make our client and server programs is to separate the diagram I showed you previously into the client program and the server program. Here I've shown you the outline for the client program. Let's just go through it step by step. You can see the same sequence of calls we had on our previous diagram. There is a socket call to make the socket. Now there's something I haven't told you about after that actually, something called get adder info. This is a utility function which will help us map between uh, human readable names and network addresses. You might want to connect for instance to um, a particular server for which you use a nice high level name and here's a port number at the end. Get adder info will turn that into a network address like an IP address and a port number if you gave it a, a name for a service like HTTP. So it's just putting the information in the right form to use with the other socket calls. The client will then call connect, which is a blocking call. So some amount of time will go by. When we, as soon as we come back, we have a connection. Then all the client needs to do is call send, send the request, receive to get it back, and close. Now, of course, this is just a skeleton outline of a program. I've omitted a huge amount of details. If you're looking at the C code, including all of the parameters, different error checking, and so forth. But nonetheless, this is the structure of a very simple client program. And on the server side, we have the corresponding sequence of calls, starting with a the socket, then get out of info, which I talked about, and uh, then the sequence bind, listen, and accept to prepare the socket to accept connections. Once we've accepted a connection, we'll go through receive, and once the request has arrived, we can construct a response and then send the reply and then you can close and you're done with the uh, socket. Normally in a server, uh, since the server is a long running program which may serve many clients, this part of the program will be in a loop, serving one request and then waiting for the next one.